Hey guys, in this video, we will learn about cracked moment of inertia. If you have ever done a stocks analysis using any stocks analysis software like eTabs or StatPro or SAP2000, then you must have used this cracked moment of inertia value over there. If you haven't yet learned eTabs or StatPro and you want to learn it, you can check the description to get special discount for those courses and you do not need prior experience or knowledge of the software these courses are for complete beginners so here we got a beam uh, we got a beam and if if i cut this beam here and see in this direction then what section will I see? I'll see a rectangular section. So let me draw a section over here of the beam. Okay, this we call as the breadth and this B and this we call as the depth and that is D. We see that you got the word moment of inertia. So what is the moment of inertia? So what is the moment first? So we say that moment is the rotating effect of the force. Okay. Rotating effect of the force. Okay. It's the turning effect. It's the twisting effect of the force. For example, in this beam, if we apply the load, let's say P, then the beam will deflect like this causing this deflection this deflected shape and we say that spending moment is there that is the rotational effect of the force and inertia inertia over here it means the resistance so moment of inertia is the resistance to the bending okay so moment of inertia is the geometric property of this section it's not about the material it's not about the material, it's not about the length of the beam, it's the geometric property of this section. This section over here that tells us how resistance a section is to the bending. Okay, so now you see because of this moment of inertia, if you use the same section beam with a different material, you will get the same moment of inertia because moment of inertia is not a property of the material it's the property of the section having known that now what is the role of this moment of inertia the concrete is strong in compression or tension it's strong in compression and it's weak in tension right and if this is the beam over here let me draw the undeflected beam side like this and this is my undeflected beam and over here along this side we got one rebar as well let's say we got one rebar as well like this okay and uh, the beam it has got the this zone we call it as the compression zone and this zone we call as the tension zone right okay so this side okay so here is the same thing so the beam is strong in compression and weak in tension when this beam is not loaded and it's in its original shape then this has got certain moment of inertia Okay, the original moment of inertia and we call it as gross moment of inertia. Gross moment of inertia. I G. You can say I G R. And this is a function of shape. It depends on the breadth, it depends on the depth, or it depends on the section. Okay. For example, for rectangular section, we say that I gross is equal to BD cube by 12. 
you see that only the section is involved and when we load this beam and it gets deflected like this then what happens because of this property over here so let me draw the deflected shape like this like this and we got one rebar as well like this okay because of this property of the concrete hair cracks or the cracks are formed in the tension zone okay like this now due to the formation of the cracks due to the formation of the cracks this cross movement of inertia reduces why because the beam is not as stiff as it was here here it has certain stiffness and when it goes here the stiffness reduces because of the formation of these hair cracks and this movement of inertia we call as we call as cracked movement of inertia and we say it i cr that is cracked movement of inertia so why why does the movement of inertia reduces as i have said movement of inertia is is the resistance is the resistance to movement and that is the bending over here so the movement of inertia resists the bending due to the load the load it tries to bend the beam and the beam tries not to bend it resists that bending because of movement of inertia and if you see over here in this undeflected shape the compression the tension the compression zone the tension zone and the rebar all they contribute for for resisting this movement until it's not that until these hair cracks are formed when you load it it slowly deflects right slowly deflects and uh, and uh, before the formation of the hair cracks the compression zone the c the tensile zone the t and the rebar they all contribute to resist the bending and after certain limit after certain limit when these hair cracks start forming then what happens is that only c the compression zone and the rebar they contribute to resist this movement and the tension zone this whole big area is no more contributing for resisting this movement and we say that the moment of inertia has reduced and we call it cracked moment of inertia the main concept over here is this gross moment of inertia is for the theoretical calculation only in the practical example or in the practical work you need this cracked moment of inertia why because in real life when the beams are loaded with the self weight the live external loads earthquake loads then because of the formation of these cracks over here the actual moment of inertia reduces and when the moment of inertia reduces that reduced moment of inertia should be taken for the calculation of this of these sections okay so what happens if we instead of taking cracked moment of inertia take the gross of gross moment of inertia for the calculation if you do this thing in e tabs or any other software okay in e tabs what you can do is you can simply simply design a simply supported beam with a point load at the center right and here what you can do you can make two models one with cracked section and other with uncracked moment of inertia you do the analysis then what you you will find is the deflection here i have taken for the whole building you know if this is your building story 1 story 2 story 3 story 4 and you apply the lateral load then it deflects then it deflects from its original position and this deflection we call it the floor deflection this is delta 1 for the top floor this is delta 2 
for the lower floor this is delta 3 for the lower floor and this is delta 4 okay so this we call as the story deflection so this over here is the original position of my building that is 0 0 and this is the story shear this curve you get from e tabs okay and if you do this for the building then you will see that with without cracked movement of inertia you will get this deflection and with cracked movement of inertia you will get around 50 percent higher higher story deflection okay now imagine you designed the building without cracked movement of inertia the software will give you the design for this deflection only and you got 50 percent more so this is not that accurate this should be somewhere here 50 percent more deflection so this should be designed for this much and you design only for this right so this is a big disaster and you should avoid it and to avoid it you need to use the correct movement of inertia and that is cracked movement of inertia so guys this much for this video i hope the video was helpful thank you for watching and take care